ഹായ് ഫ്രണ്ട്സ് വൺസ് അഗെയിൻ വെൽക്കം ടു മൈ യൂട്യൂബ് ചാനൽ ഫ്യൂച്ചർ മിഡ് വൈഫ് ടുഡേസ് അവർ ടോപ്പിക് ഈസ് കൺട്രാക്റ്റഡ് പെൽവിസ് ദോസ് ഹു ആർ വാച്ചിങ് ദിസ് വീഡിയോ ഫസ്റ്റ് ടൈം ഐ ഹാവ് എ റിക്വസ്റ്റ് ടു വാച്ച് മൈ പ്രീവിയസ് വീഡിയോ ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ഫീമെയിൽ പെൽവിസ് ആൻഡ് ഇറ്റ്സ് ഫീച്ചേഴ്സ് So, before watching this, you can watch that video which will helps to understand this section very well. I have included the link of female pelvis video in the description box. You can watch it. Without wasting time, we can move on to our today's topic, contracted pelvis. When we discuss about the contracted pelvis, it need to discuss in two ways. that is anatomically and obstetrically first we'll see about anatomical definition it is a pelvis in which one or more of its diameter is reduced below the normal by one or more centimeter whereas when it comes to the obstetrical definition it is a pelvis in which one or more of its diameter is reduced so that it interfere with the normal mechanism of labor Here we'll discuss about the factors influencing the size and shape of the pelvis. The first one will be the developmental factors which include hereditary or congenital factors. Next one will be the racial factor. According to the race, it can change the size and shape of the female pelvis. pelvis next one will be nutritional factors in case of malnutrition which can result in small pelvis next one will be sexual factors in cases of excessive secretion of androgen which can produce android pelvis next one will be metabolic factors so in case of rickets or osteomalacia which can also alter the size and shape of the pelvis the last one will be trauma diseases or tumors of the bony pelvis legs or spines can lead to variation in the size and shape of the female pelvis here i will explain about the etiology of contracted pelvis in elaborately the first factors will be developmental factors as i said you just before it can include congenital or hereditary factors so which include small gynecoid pelvis small android pelvis small anthropoid pelvis small platypelvoid pelvis that we called it as simple flat pelvis nagel's pelvis in this case absence of one sacral ala next one will be robert pelvis here there is absence of both sacral ala high assimilation pelvis here the sacrum is composed of six vertebrae low assimilation pelvis this is composed of four vertebrae the last one will be split pelvis in this case there will be a split in the symphysis pubis area so these are the developmental factors of contracted pelvis among this category small gynecoid pelvis is usually called as contracted pelvis Here I will explain few features of developmental defected contracted pelvis. We will see one by one. First of all, we will see about anthropoid pelvis. In case of anthropoid pelvis, it is present in some males and females. 50% in Asian women and 15 to 30% in white women. Pelvic inlet is long oval in shape. anterior posterior diameter is more than the transverse diameter long and narrow sacrum will be presented in case of anthropoid pelvis when it comes to the anthropoid pelvis it is present in most males and also in few females heart shaped or triangular pelvic inlet will be present due to the prominent sacrum the problem in delivery head occipital posterior will be most common in this case of anthroid pelvis narrow subpubic angle less than 90 degree will be present in case of platypelvoid pelvis which is usually uncommon in both sexes pelvic inlet appears slightly flattened or kidney shaped transverse diameter is greater than the anterior posterior diameter here the sacral promontory is pushed forward Here in case of Nagel's pelvis which is extremely rare due to arrested development one of the ala is missing here 
Pelvis is obliquely contracted at all levels but more marked in the outlet. Straight iliopectineal line on the affected side. Whereas in case of Robert pelvis, ala of both the sides are absent. Also sacrum is fused with the innominate bones. Here we'll discuss about the next etiological factors of contracted pelvis that is metabolic factors which include rickets, osteomalacia, traumatic reason in case of any fracture, neoplastic reason such as osteoma. Here I will explain few features of contracted pelvis in case of rickets and osteomalacia. In case of osteomalacic pelvis which is caused by softening of the pubic bone due to the deficiency of calcium, vitamin D and lack of exposure to sun rays. The promontory is pushed downward and forward and the lateral pelvic wall are pushed inward causing the anterior wall to form a beak. Triradiate shape of inlet will be present here. Approximation of two ischial tuberosities will be here. Here we have shortened sacrum also cosics is pushed forward. Rickets in early childhood cause bones to remain soft and unossified. In case of inlet, sacral promontory is pushed downward and forward producing a reniform shape. In case of cavity, sacrum is flat and tilted backward. Sharp angulation at the sacrococcygeal joint. When it comes to the outlet, widened transverse diameter and pubic arch will be present. Here we will see the causes in the spine which include lumbar kyphosis, lumbar scoliosis, spondylolithiasis. In case of spondylolithiasis, the fifth lumbar vertebra with the above vertebral column is pushed forward while the promontory is pushed backward and the tip of the sacrum is pushed forward leading to outlet contraction. Next we will see the causes in the lower limbs which include dislocation of one or both femur and atrophy of one or both lower limbs. In case of kypotic pelvis, which is developed secondary to the kypotic changes of the vertebral column, sacrum is tilted backward in the upper part and forward in the lower part. It is narrow and straight. Anterior-posterior diameter is increased at the inlet but is decreased in the outlet. Nara suprapubic angle will be present. Extreme funneling of the pelvis can be lead to pendulous abdomen. In case of scoliosis, acetabulum is pushed inward on the weight bearing side. At the same time, there will be a contraction of one of the oblique diameter. Here we reach the diagnosis of contracted pelvis. In that first one is history collection and physical examination. In the history collection we have to ask any history of any rickets. It is expected if there is any history of delayed walking and dentition. Next we have to ask any trauma or a disease in the pelvis, spine or lower limbs. Next, we have to ask about the bad obstetrical history such as prolonged labor which has been ended by difficult forceps, cesarean section or stillbirth. In case of general examination, we have to check the gait of the patient. Abnormal gait suggesting abnormalities in the pelvis, spine and lower limbs. Next, we have to check the stature of the patient. Women with less than 150 cm height usually have contracted pelvis. Next we have to check any spine or lower limb diseases or lesions. So next we have to check the manifestations of rickets such as square head, rosary beads in the coastal ridge, pigeon chest, Harrison sulcus and bow legs. When we do the abdominal examination, non-engagement of head will be seen. Usually it will be seen last 3 to 4 weeks in primary gravida. Pendulous abdomen will be also seen in case of primary gravida. Malpresentations are also common. Apart from that we can go for pelvimetry. Pelvimetry we can do in both ways internal and external. X-ray, MRI and CT scan of pelvis also can be performed in order to identify the contracted pelvis.
Next, I would like to discuss about the degrees of contracted pelvis, which can be categorized into minor degree, moderate degree, severe degree and extreme degree. In case of minor degree, the true conjugate is 9 to 10 cm. It corresponds to minor disproportion. Moderate degree, the true conjugate is 8 to 9 cm. It corresponds to moderate disproportion. In case of severe degree, the true conjugate is 6 to 8 cm. It corresponds to marked disproportion. When it comes to the extreme degree, the true conjugate is less than 6 cm. Vaginal delivery is impossible even after craniotomy as the bimastoid diameter is not crushed. Here we reach the management aspect of contracted pelvis. It should be depend mainly on the degree of disproportion. In case of minor disproportion, such as minor degree of contracted pelvis, we can go for vaginal delivery. Moderate disproportion, mainly moderate degree of contracted pelvis, we can go for trial labor. If it is failed, go for caesarean section. In case of marked disproportion, that means in case of severe or extreme degree of contracted pelvis, only we can opt caesarean section. That is about contracted pelvis. In this video, I have explained about the definition of contracted pelvis, factors affecting contracted pelvis, causes of contracted pelvis, diagnosis of contracted pelvis and different degrees of contracted pelvis, also the management. I hope all of you understood about the contracted pelvis. The remaining complications and nursing management will be displayed on the slide. Please have a look on it. In the next class, we will meet with an another episode of Midwifery Topic. Till that, take care. Bye-bye.